Hey guys, how's it going? Happy Monday. Sorry that I'm all sniffly, but um, I don't know what the deal is. It's like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Allergy. It's like just crazy allergy time. And I don't know if this is regional or what. It just seems like it's in Chicago, but... Um, do you know what I hear outside right now? Anyway. Um... Sorry, I just got a funny text. Um, anyway, I have been sneezing like crazy the past two or three days. And you know, you might go, what's the big deal, Kelly? Here's the thing, I um, probably, I don't know, several years ago, this was when I lived at my old, old place. Um, I used to take Alivert, like, it, well, first of all, I went through all of the allergy tests, you know, where they put the needles in your back and test to see what you're allergic to. In fact. One of my friends just had that. She texted me back and she's like, I'm pretty much allergic to the world. <laughs> she's like, I'm allergic to coffee, I'm allergic to grass, I'm allergic to dust, I'm allergic to this. She's going through this list and I'm like, what are you, what are you not allergic to? Um, anyway, I had all of the tests done. Um, this is when I lived in my condo before I got married and I remember how bizarre it was because it told me I was allergic to um, grass and cats. And I lived right behind, I had this really nice area, but it backed up onto a sod field, which was nice because you knew that nobody was ever going to develop that land, but it was just, you know, grass. So here I am living with two cats behind a sod field, and I'm allergic to cats and grass. Um, but the thing is, back then, they told me that, and of course they prescribed, like, uh, I went to Claritin, to Zyrtec, and, you know, all of these different prescriptions, and I was paying, like, 50 or or $100 a month, um... And, and I was still sneezing all the time. So I remember my thoughts were, you know what, forget it. By the way, I didn't cut my hair. I just have it all pulled up back there. I thought, why am I paying this much money if I'm still sneezing and wheezing? This is like if I'm not taking anything. I might as well take my money back. So I stopped taking that, and then I discovered Alivert, which is over-the-counter, and it dissolves in your mouth. I thought I heard my phone ringing. My phone's right here. Hello, Kelly. Please shut up and die. Um, anyway, um, I'm not meant to live anywhere in the vicinity of loud children at all. I really need to like move to an adult assisted facility. I think that's what I need. Um, but anyway, so I would take Oliver every day. Like that's, that's how much my allergies were affecting me all the time year round. I had to take Oliver every day. Um, and I remember at the time when I started dating my husband um, and and he had uh, two kids and um, when they would when we had them for the weekend you know because I had cats and they were not used to being around cats I remember that they would take my Oliver to like get used to the cats all that said I have not had I weaned myself off of those years ago and I have not had allergy problems for years so the fact that I have literally been the kind of I guess you know, sneezing where, you know, when you walk outside and you go and, and it just starts and just being outside is making you sneeze. I've had that like the last three days. It sucks. What are you going to do? This is my green tea from this morning. Also, I do want to tell you that technically I took my, what did I do? I got on the scale last Tuesday, not Monday, when I, I've been doing Valerie Waters program. Um, but just for shits and giggles, I was in there this morning and I'm like, okay. And I said out loud to myself, I'm like, I'm going to take my measurements because I'm just curious, but I want to see around my waist because I feel like when I look in the mirror, um, like I've been, it's, it's a remarkable, no, I, I notice enough. You guys know how frustrated and how hard I've been on myself the past two years. So for me to actually be able to walk by my mirror out there, you know, look in the mirror in the restroom and go, I can see, I can see that like, cause you, you know, I've told you I'm very hourglass and with the whole perimenopause thing, that hourglass, instead of going in and out, it got a little bit more <laughs> cause, cause that weight that they tell you, you gain with hormonal changes or just life changes as you get older is all like right there. So I'm like thicker in the middle and I was walking by and I just, I see it in my lower hips and I also see it in my waist. And I was like, and so I took, I took out the measurement thing and I'm like, don't be attached to the outcome. Just keep, you know, going with the process. I'll get with you in a minute. 
Um, but I took my measurements and I have lost, which is why I'm glad. I don't know about you guys, but if you've ever taken measurements before and you see something and you're like, say it's, you know, say it's 75 and a quarter inches or 75 and three fourths of an inch, you might be like, well, I'm just going to call it 75. Don't do that to yourself because when you, when you start losing weight, especially if it's going to be kind of the right way or it's not going to be really dramatic and really fast, um, you you need to know when you've lost a quarter of an inch. You need to know when you've lost three quarters of an inch. Those things count. So I made sure that I put down on here if it was a quarter of an inch, if it was a half an inch, whatever. And it looks like I've lost half an inch on my waist. Um, now I'm going to... Hold on. I'm going to go uh, tomorrow and then officially... Like I didn't write these down. I just wanted to measure. But I do know that a half an inch is gone from my waist. Uh... I'm trying to think. It looks like another half an inch at my hips. So it looks like I've lost a half an inch. Um, for So anyway, either way, number one, um, after the first week of this program, um, really like the workouts. I really feel good. I feel, what's the best way to say this? I feel good in that the program is, is like I can get to the end of the week and go, I've hit everything. I've done my, I've done enough cardio for the week. I've done a good amount of cardio to balance the amount of circuit training and strength training I'm doing. And then the strength training that I'm doing is hitting everything. Like I know, as I shared with you at the end of last week, I've hit my shoulders, I've hit my back, I've hit my chest, I've hit my core, I've hit my glutes in a big way. Um, I've hit my quads, my hamstrings, my calves, everything. So it's, it's complete. I feel that it's balanced and it's freaking tough. Um, like I'm looking forward to seeing the progress that I'm going to make each time, how much stronger my core can get, how much, um, you know, longer, like those pikes. Oh my God. And all I can say, you do not, you almost like there's certain moves that you love to hate. Burpees are one of them for me. Freaking hate burpees, but you know that they're great for you. Let's just say that Val has created this thing called an atomic push-up that I despise her for creating, but I do know that it's so good. And it does make you feel really badass when you're doing it. So, yeah, there's that. I just, I was cursing you, Val. I'm not going to lie. I was cursing you when I was doing that. So, anyway, I think this week what I will do is mix it up. And last week I did Miami, the Miami workout, and then I did... Um, Malibu and then Ibiza. I think what I'm going to do today is Malibu, Ibiza, Miami. Just shaking it up a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to do some different cardio. So tomorrow I'm going to be at my um, gym at Lifetime Fitness and I'm going to do maybe um, some intervals um, because tomorrow's cardio day. I'm going to do some intervals on the um, like the treadmill and then the stairs probably and maybe the rowing machine, mix it up and then I'll probably go what I love to do when I'm finished working out. At Lifetime, you can go to either the steam room or the sauna, um, which in some of the books I've been reading, they're all about, that's really good. They suggest that if you can to wait, I, I'm going to have to figure out why they said that. I'm going to have to go back. But they suggest that if you can to like wait before you go into the sauna or the steam room, I don't know, 15 or 20, like I, it's ideal to take a shower and whatever and then go. I don't have time for that, um, but I do love, even if it's in the summer, I just love going into the sauna or the steam room um, after my workouts. And then this is the third book that I'm now reading, which I do know for years and years and years, I've read about this guy, Dr. John Lee. I believe he's passed away. Um, but this is a very, this is quote, this book is quoted by virtually anybody in the like holistic, natural, healing, hormonal balance type of, of stuff. Um, and as you can see, there's just tons of pages that I've marked here um, to save. But he's all about very, very informative and also, you know, kind of talking about what a lot of other doctors are going to prescribe to women. They either have, you know, really bad PMS issues or have had problems conceiving or that are heading into it. See, he calls it pre-menopause. He doesn't want to call it perimenopause because he says you can be in pre-menopause. Basically, it means your body starts changing. It doesn't mean that you're necessary. I, I guess technically perimenopause means that you are like in that short period of time before you actually hit menopause when you, sorry guys, when you stop having, you know, your monthly cycle or whatever. So that's when it's closer, but you can be in pre 
menopause, which just means hormonal change for women. Um, essentially, I'm paraphrasing, um, you can have that start in, in your 30s. Now for me, it didn't start until I was 40, right about 40 um, is when this lovely gift from God, you know, to talk to him about that when I die, um, was given to me. But anyway, all that to say, one of the things I am going to, to buy um, and start using is um, natural, natural, he's very much against, obviously, um, synthetic uh, HRT, is that right? Hormone replacement therapy, yeah. Um, but you can buy natural progesterone cream and you, you put it on your, you know, here or here, I believe your neck, um, other points, um, which people rave about how that can help with migraines. It can help with not being able to sleep. It can help with um, hot flashes. It can help with uh, weight issues and thyroid and all that, which is all the beautiful stuff I'm working on. So there's that. But this is really, I have heard about this book when I first started um, getting involved in using Arbon for my skincare because for those of you guys that don't know, Arbon is very much focused on, you know, everything pure, safe, and beneficial, blah, blah, blah. You guys don't hear me talking about it a lot because I don't want to be one of those annoying um, direct sales people that all they talk about like Visalis people, no offense, um, all they talk about is their product. And they also, all they talk about is making money. They're like, this person's a six-figure earner. This person, I'm, you know, I'm making money sitting from my couch. I'm making money while I sleep. Great. Who talks about making money first? I, what an annoying thing. I mean, I just find that so annoying. If that's what you have to lead in when you meet with people, to say, hi, my name's Kelly Alexa. This is how much money I charge per hour. Who, I mean, literally, who wants to talk to someone like that? And that is what gets on my nerves. I'm an Arbonne consultant, and I sell it if people want to buy from me, but I don't sell it. I don't talk about it. If people ask me what I use for skincare and they want to buy it from me, go nutty. Buy it from me. But the last thing I want to do is be that person that every time you see him, you're like, oh, God, here comes Kelly. She's going to tell me about Arbonne. Or, you know, like back in the day, I felt that way about Mary Kay people because every time you'd run into a Mary Kay person, would you like a makeover? No. I don't want to make over. And by looking at your face and the way you wear enough makeup for three clowns, I don't want one. That was mean. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that because I'm sure there's many fantastic Mary Kay people. I've just never had a good experience with one of them. Uh, so that said, this might be one of my shortest vlogs for a while. It's 12 minutes. I'm going to go get my workout in because, yes, I need to work out in 10 minutes. I've shot my vlog, working out uh, in 10 minutes. Then I have to get a shower. Then I have a meeting. Then I come back and I have about 700 proposals and contracts that I have to get done by 6 o'clock today. Fantastic. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Also, what else was I going to say? Hmm. I found my new condo this weekend, so I'm giving it to God, and I'm praying that it's all going to come together, which I believe it will, um, but I'm very, very excited to start packing up this place and moving and <sighs> be in a new neighborhood that makes me very happy, and I might add that my new condo is in very close proximity to Trader Joe's. What could be better? I'll move into Trader Joe's, okay? I'll live in the back of Trader Joe's in a tent if I have to. That would be so cool. Okay, I gotta go. Bye.